one thing, just one, one thing you lack, one thing you lack. Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scripture. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing you lack. I, I have heard from many recently about a great many of things. Many people struggling right now, going through sins, you know, getting sin out of their lives and struggling with um, temptation, struggling with heartbreak. Struggling with loss of friends, dashing of hopes. A lot of people are hurting right now. A lot of people are hurting right now. But see, we who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, our anchor of the soul is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But there are many out there. Oh, there are so many out there who put on religion as if they are putting on a new set of clothes. There are people out there who can change many things. But on the inside, one thing they lack that is going to be what we are talking about today. One thing you lack. And what is that one thing? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along word for word, word for word, verse by verse, in your authorized version of the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along, okay? Our main text today is going to be from Luke chapter 18, okay? We are going to be reading and expounding a little bit here on Luke chapter 18, verses 18 on to verse 27, okay? So, with that said, this is the rich young ruler. Very religious, pious man. But one thing he lacked. Most of you know this. Most of you know this. Uh, this uh, tale here. Most of you do. Let's really get deep into this. Let's really get deep into this because there are those out there who are telling you that certain things mean something other than what God has defined them as. These people are dangerous. These people are liars. Pulling a yea hath God said right in front of your face. And we're going to be addressing that today. Okay? Not as they do. Not as the world. Because they are of the world. Therefore the world heareth them. But no, we're going to do it appropriately. So, without further ado, let us begin. Luke chapter 18, verse 18. And like I said, we are going to be looking at verses 18 on to verse 27. Okay? We got some stops along the way. So please follow me along. And a certain ruler asked him. So this man was a ruler. Good master. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, we also have to remember that when this was spoken unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, this was before the death, burial, and resurrection. So, doctrinally, the law was still binding. The law and the prophets were in jo until John. Uh, but elsewhere it says prophesied until John, okay? The perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made until the death, burial, and resurrection. So what? 
the law, so what, it was in limbo at that time? Oh no, the, uh, the three and a half year ministry, that was a, it's, no, no, the law was still binding. Why? Because the perfect sacrifice had yet to be made. Okay? So doctrinally, this is still under the Old Testament, under the law. Okay? But he says, good master. What is this? A certain ruler, okay, he had opulence, okay? He, he, he was a ruler, okay? Asked him, good master, what shall I do? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Good master. Mark, Mark chapter 12, what is this? Good master, well, let's look at that. Mark chapter 12. Verses 13 and 14. And they send unto him, our Lord Jesus Christ, certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him. Aha! Aha! In his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master. Good master. Master. We know that thou art true. And carest for no man. For thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God and truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? And you can go ahead and keep reading for, uh, for the rest of that. But look at verse 14. And look at verse 18 in Luke chapter 18. Good master. Hmm. What is that? That's flattery. That's flattery. Now, these Pharisees and Herodians who were, went to try to catch him in his talk, okay, did they really attribute that onto him in verse 14, or were they just saying that to make themselves look pious and try to butter him up? Yeah. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, okay? Verses 36 on to verse 39. Verses 36 on to verse 39 in Luke chapter 7. This is, this is, okay, now, they were saying that, we looked at, you know, uh, using flattering words to make themselves look, you know, hey, hey, they go to him, you know, and they did it to uh, catch him in his talk. This guy's like, hey, what can I do? Good master, Okay. Good master. Only saw a man there. But here's another angle on this. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 on to verse 39. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Ah, so associating himself. It's like, hey, look at me, huh? I'm going to bring this Jesus into my house and sit with him and have dinner with him. Look at me. Look at how, see? See what I'm doing? I'm taking Jesus with me. Yeah. I'm letting him in. Yeah. Look at me. Look at me. I'm, I'm righteous. I'm pious. And behold, gotta love this. A woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Verse 39. Now remember, this Pharisee had Jesus come in. Hey, look at me. I hear, hey, here's the man of the hour, right? He's the good master. Uh, he doesn't care for people. He doesn't accept the person of man. He speaks truly, right? One thing he lacked. Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, stop, a prophet. Was Jesus Christ God our Father a prophet? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, sure, of course. But 
more to the point, he is God. So, of course, the source of all prophecy, of all true prophets, is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. So, yeah, prophet, priest, king, that kind of thing, he encompasses all things. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, this guy is like just a prophet. He was just a prophet. If, if he were. Okay. So here this guy brings in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, into our into his house to make it look, seem like, hey, look at me, look at me. When in his heart, one thing he lacked, it's like, if this guy, if this guy was anything, if this man, if uh, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And, and in the same chapter that we are gleaning over in Luke chapter 18, okay, look, look, look across the page, or uh, up a little, at verses 10 on to verse 12 in Luke chapter 18. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Oh, yeah, you've, you've arrived, haven't you, boy? You're somebody. You're a somebody. God help you. <laughs> Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. <laughs> I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I do this. What thing must can I do? Hmm? Look at me. Look at how pious, how righteous I am. Look at what I do. Look at what I do. And see, when pride is called upon, called out on people, I have seen this, oh, on so many occasions, they, they list their accomplishments. They defend themselves in their accomplishments. And what do these same people do? Well, Paul, they go to try to hide behind what Paul said without dealing with the pride within themselves. Okay. Yes, Paul defended himself. Paul was uh, was defending himself. Yes, he was. He's, he said, those who examine me of this, you know, I say this. Okay. So yes, Paul was defending himself. But see, these people who are in pride will hide behind that while not wrestling and dealing with that inner thing, pride. Okay. And they immediately... Well, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 26 under verse 27. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, not because he gave witness and testimony of himself that this is God. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh, okay, by the miracles which he wrought. They didn't follow him, go after him because they saw that. No, but because he did eat of the loaves and were filled. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do to inherit it? Verse 27 in John chapter 6. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Hmm. John, uh, Isaiah chapter 29. What's going on here? What is going on here? Hmm. Let's look. 
Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 on to verse 15. Hmm. This is what's going on. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, good master, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Oh, you, you throw away the word of God in order that you may keep your own tradition, don't you? Yeah, you sure do. Yeah. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Wisdom. Now, within Scripture in Job 28, 28, our Lord clearly says that the fear of the Lord, that that is wisdom. So our Lord defines what true wisdom is. Begins with what? God, the fear of the Lord. Now, words are in Scripture defined by context. But when utilizing first mention, you have a ratio of, like I have told you before, of seven, up, uh, seven out of ten times that the word that you are looking at is defined in that way seven out of ten times. But you also have to remember, yes, that context gives you the true definition of every word. You have to remember that. Yes. But see, when it comes to wisdom, okay, wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, as our Lord himself says in the book of Job and in the Psalms, you know, that the fear of the Lord, that is the beginning of wisdom, okay? The fear of the Lord, okay? This is stuff that our Lord clearly set out. But see, in every incidence within Scripture, where wisdom applies or wisdom is found, not every occurrence is a reference onto the fear of the Lord. Why is that? Because of the context in which it appears. You have to remember that. Context, my boy. Context, yes. Yes. That is the ultimate definition, okay? So many people, now like I've told you before, this is a little rabbit, so get your teriyaki sauce. Good teriyaki sauce and good hot sauce, you know, the stuff that makes you sweat, okay? People like to go to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and I have been made aware, too, by the way, and i got to fix this, that the online Webster's 1828 Dictionary is apparently no longer available. Hmm. But a lot of people like to go to Webster. There, there's nothing wrong with going to Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I recommend it. Webster was not infallible. This, the scriptures, are infallible. Okay. There are many occasions where Mr. Webster botched it in his definitions. And you do remember, Mr. Webster, because he knew so many things about words, wrote, uh, translated his own version of the Bible. Of the Bible. The Bible. Not the scriptures. The Bible. Okay. It's called Webster's translation. You can find it. Okay. So, but there were times when Mr. Webster botched it. Perfect example. Recompense with an S and with a C. Oh, Brad, you're making, oh, no, 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 no. No. So oh, a single letter doesn't make a difference. Okay. So then God is, God is spirit then, huh? Hmm? No, God is a spirit. Take out that one little letter. Changes the whole, one little letter. Changes the whole thing. Okay? Recompense with an S and with a C. One is a noun, one is a verb. You see that in Scripture. But you look that up in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, he groups it all under the S. You might, well, that's harmless. No. No, dear friend. See, God's Word. God's Word. The Scriptures. 
makes distinction in words. Okay, they are important. And one little letter. One is a noun, one is a verb. Okay? These are important things. And when you got people coming around trying to change the meanings of words, you know, oh, that's dangerous. That's yea hath God said. Okay, now, now let's continue. Because see here in verse 14, it says wisdom. For the wisdom of their wise men. Now is that in context a reference unto the fear of the Lord? For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. And is that understanding and departing from evil? And in context, no, no. That is in context to what? Flesh. There, there. Okay. See context, context. Verse fifteen. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? And who knoweth us? And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? We're back in Luke chapter 18. Verse 19. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one. That is God. So, We've already, okay, this rich young ruler, many of them, went to Jesus, just seeing a more, just a regular guy who might, might have been a prophet, but he, he, he was a good teacher, not realizing, <coughs> not believing on that right there stood before them, God manifest in the flesh, their promised Messiah, their King, the son of David. Okay? Isaiah chapter 28. Okay, while we're here. Isaiah chapter 28. Talked about this before, but we have to hit it again. See, our Lord says here, And Jesus saith unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one. That is God. Remember that. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 on to verse 13. Okay, we've talked about this before, but go with me on this, okay? Whom shall he teach knowledge? Isaiah 28, verses 9 on to verse 13. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay? Now we, as the church of the living God, okay, go to, uh, where is that? 1 Peter chapter 2. Not the concordance brand. 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 2. Okay, go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be... Ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may what? That we may grow thereby. Go from childhood to adolescence to adulthood in our Lord through the scriptures. Okay? Okay? Back to Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Okay? First uh, Corinthians chapter 3. Oh yeah, had to come here. First Corinthians chapter 3. <laughs> this has been addressed unto you several times, but it needs to be addressed again because it is happening and being promoted right before our eyes. And who, who's saying anything about this? Who's saying anything about this? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 4. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, 
carnal, fleshly. Okay? Even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. And hold your place here and go to Hebrews chapter 5. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. You'll, you'll know why we're looking at this here in a minute. We have to go through this, okay? Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 14. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word. Yeah. Of righteousness, and skillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. I've known people who have claimed to be saved for six, seven years, and they are still babes. Because they depend on men to tell them what to think, what to believe. Okay? But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, <laughs> them that are weaned from the milk, in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, okay? Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil exercise being put into practice. Okay? Oh, many people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But how so many few put it into practice. Now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? Picking up at verse 3. In chapter 3 in 1 Corinthians. For ye are yet fleshly, carnal. Carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal, worldly, worldlings? And walk as men. So, if you knew nothing else how to define this word carnal, walk as men. Man, carnal. Man is carnal. Man is carnal. If you knew nothing else, of, you know, of what, what does carnal mean? Verse 3, and walk as men. Hmm. <laughs> Verse 4, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? <laughs> Are ye not carnal? Back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10, okay? <laughs> Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. How to read the scripture. And we, as the church of the living God, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, upon line here a little and there a little. Okay? We study the word of God that we may be approved. Okay? Yes, you know, rightly dividing. This is not talking about rightly dividing, okay? By the way, this is not, okay? This is, has nothing to do with rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? Those who are drawn from the breast, who desire meat, okay? You get milk from the word, but you also get meat from the word. We search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Why? Because in the scriptures, because... Of the Lord who dwells within us. The Lord is the one within us who makes the scriptures come alive unto us. Hence, we receive life through reading the word because we have that life in us ourselves, the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, there are those out there who have not the Lord Jesus Christ. 
okay, who will search the scriptures, but they're missing that one thing that they lack is God himself. Okay, and look at verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Okay? See, with, an, with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak. Will he speak? Will he speak to this people? Excuse me, okay? And for that, go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Okay? John chapter 8. We want verses 43 on to verse 47. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Why can't they hear his word? Ye are, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father will ye do. What good thing can I do to inherit eternal life? And our Lord says, And why callest thou me, why callest thou me good? No man is good. Flesh is not good, dear friend. Flesh is not good at all. Okay? See, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was right there standing before him. But he couldn't discern that he was talking to God, but rather just, just a man who had some good advice or just a prophet, or someone who doesn't respect people's persons, but teaches, a good teacher, but not God. Hmm? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. You're lying. You, you're lying. Yes, you are. Yeah. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And also, also, 1 Corinthians, go back to 1 Corinthians, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 29. For you for you see your for you excuse me, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, wise men after the flesh, wise men after the flesh. Being wise is attributed unto what? Wisdom. Wisdom is to fear the Lord. But see, context, my boy. Context. Wise men after the flesh. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Uh-huh. Yeah. Earthly. Dirt. Man. Sensual. Senses. Feels good. Devilish. Because remember, the devil savoreth not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Because he's been cursed to eat dirt, dust all the days of his life. We're dust. You do know that, right? I hope so. Okay? But it says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Oh, yeah. Why? Why are not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble? Let's keep reading. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world. Of the world! See, to be a fool is to say in your heart there is no God. So, excuse me. So to be foolish is to behave as if there is no God. But here, in context, my boy, in context, foolish things of the world oh, to confound the wise. 
So what the world sees as foolish, what the world sees as wise, and what the world sees as foolish are those of us at the Church of the Living God. And what the world thinks is wise, like Hawkins, Gates, Tony Robbins, what's that uh, Peterson guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or or, or what's that um, Cologne guy? Oh oh, help me. What is that? Uh, Musk, that Elon Musk guy. Yeah, yeah. To the world, those guys are wise, but according to the scripture, they're fools. See, context, context, context. Okay? Okay, let's continue. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why? Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And that is why not many. Doesn't say not any. It says not many. Not many wise men after the flesh. Not many mighty. Not many noble. Why? Because it can go to their head. And they will glory, I've done this, I've done this, I've written this, I've written this, look at me, I'm up here. <laughs> Goes to their head. They reach a point where they are no longer Christ dependent, but sitting back on their lees and on their accomplishments and like to put them up for display for everybody. And they hide behind, well, Paul did that. Yeah, but see, he wasn't making his way off of that. See, he was doing it only in defense. These people who are in pride, they're, they're rubbing it in on you. They're rubbing it in on you. They're rubbing it in on you. And verses 11 and uh, 12 and 13 in Isaiah chapter 28. Okay? So with stammering lips and another tongue, those that the world sees as foolish, those who are drawn from the breast, those who have God within them, the spirit of truth, and the Lord is that spirit who will guide you into all truth, the Lord within you will make this, the scriptures, come alive unto you and feed you with the sincere milk of the word and feed you with his word. See, with the Lord within you, the scripture is life unto you. Do you get it? But see, someone who is not, who doesn't have the Lord on, in them, verses 12 on to verse 13. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet, they, oh, who's the they? Pharisees, the ones who like to boast of their accomplishments to you. Who are they, the wise, the mighty, the noble, who can glory in flesh and will glory when you say, aren't you full of, well, I've done that. Yet they would not hear. That's why it's futile to try to rebuke certain people. I mean, it's futile because pride. I, I, you, you know, I have a pride problem. I have a grotesque pride problem. And the Lord has given me a thorn in the flesh to humble me because of my pride. I struggle with pride every single day. Okay, I do. I have a pride problem. All right. All right. I do. I do. And I admit that. And I seek daily to the Lord to help, <laughs> to overcome that. It's, it's not easy. But see, I have pride and I struggle with it. I, it's, 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 oh, it's horrible. I can spot it in other people quite readily and quite easily. And I see it. You know what I say to that?
But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Why? Because they don't have the source of all life within them. So they will look into the scriptures as a mechanical means. Okay? Mechanical. No life. No life, no life whatsoever. No life whatsoever. You know, our Lord says, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Save one. Oh, excuse me, save one. That is God. See, the, this rich young ruler dude here, he, he just saw a guy, he just saw a man who might give him some good words of advice to make his life better. To seek for opulence, stuff like that. Okay? Didn't have the eyes to see like the blind beggar did. This guy who had eyes and had everything couldn't see, but the blind beggar. That's very telling. That's very telling, okay? That's very. But for this now, okay? Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, okay? This is what the Lord is getting at. Okay, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 on to verse 11. Of course, thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Because no, that flesh will, no flesh will go glory in their presence, in his presence, excuse me. You know, that's why not many mighty, not many wise, not many noble. Why? Because they start getting the things done, it goes straight to their head. Okay? And then they rest in flesh, the flesh is their arm. Okay? For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Oh, well, these people are doing really good. Yeah, see, they're, 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 they're rough, right? I've seen this before, these Christians, brethren. My father, he's a millionaire. And he's the first one who's going to tell you that. Because he did it God's way. But yet, flesh is his arm. He's going to, you know, and it's like, Father, you have a little pride in you going, you know, boasting to me about, well, I've done this. How, how many people have you lent to the Lord? It's, it's funny because a lot of these people who have accused others of this very thing, they're doing it themselves because they have reached the plateau of greatness in their own flesh. See. <laughs> it's, it's incredible to me. It's incredible. And it's very instructive on how we ought not to be. How we are not to become. Take warning of these people, brethren. How not to be. Because the longer you walk with the Lord, the more humble you ought to be. But it seems with these Christians, they get the blessings. Yes, they get to a certain place. Their ego and their pride just woo goes off the charts. I've seen it way too many times. I've seen it way too many times. Verse 7 in Jeremiah chapter 17. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding. Come on, read this with me. Come on, I hope you are. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You're a fool if you trust in your own heart. And you say, God knows my heart. Well, yes, he does. That, that statement alone is saying that you're trusting in your own heart. You're a fool. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That's the 
partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them. So he that getteth riches, not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. A fool. You know, God can give you riches. Yes, he can. And riches are beyond this, yes. But when people start to put their stock or trust or display them, kind of like King Hezekiah, you're asking for trouble. There are certain things that some people should have just kept their mouth shut about and kept it to themselves. You know, if someone was inquiring, it's like, hey, did you get your bills paid? Huh? Did you pay your rent? Huh? Did you, you got food on your table? Good, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, you got to come out and rub in your face all the things, all the little worldly things that you have been given now. There are certain things some people should have just kept their big mouth shut about and kept it between them and the Lord and those select few. Now, no, no. I, there is a, something to be about being having transparency. Absolutely. But you know what, brethren, people, y'all don't need to know everything. Okay, discover not a secret uh, to one another, you know, to everybody. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A very excellent bloke taught me a lesson about that one. I ain't never forgot that like I didn't know it before, but had to be reminded, you know. <laughs> More on these distractions in other videos. Okay, other videos, okay. But uh, let, let's continue this, Okay. All right. Now, let's go back to uh, Luke chapter 18. Okay. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Verse 20. Thou knowest the commandments. Ruler, certain ruler, yes. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. Thou knowest the commandments. Matthew chapter 23. Thou knowest the commandments. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 under verse 3. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees, who are covetous, sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. Okay, well, 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 well time out. Well, hold on, let's finish the verse. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Hmm. It's like, okay, the Lord is saying, it's like, okay, what they're telling you is true. But they don't walk according to that rule of truth that they tell you. But see, what they are telling you is truth. Again, there are those out there who are not of the church of the living God who can bring you truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Blah, blah, blah. Thy word is truth. Someone can be lost, infiltrating devil heretic and speak to you plain truth because there are aspects of truth in scripture that even lost devils can understand and even speak. Okay? But see, Thy word is truth. See, in that verse right there, verse 3, our Lord is giving uh, primacy unto the scriptures, unto the commandments. Okay? Okay? So what he's saying is, is like, look, they're telling you the truth, but they're not living according to that truth. They're not walking their talk that they tell to you. Okay? And if they are, is it possible that they might be doing it mechanically? Hmm. Verse 4, or did I say just to verse 3? Ah, uh, let's read verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Let's read verse 5. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Okay. Mechanical. You, you, got, you got to remember, 
in the Old Testament, under the law, people could go and give uh, an animal to have a blood sacrifice to cover their sins, but yet not have the love of God in their hearts. Okay? All right? You could go and make the offering to cover your sin, but yet have nothing to do with God. Okay? Okay? So, a lot of people will put on religion. This is why I hate religion. Okay? Okay? Because true religion, which it talks about in James, okay, is to do what you are talking about. Okay? You're doing something. Yeah, you're living up to what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay? Okay? That's the basis of religion. But see, a lot of people will say, okay, for example, you could pray for two hours a day. Who are you praying to? Are you putting faith in your prayers or putting your faith upon the one who will answer your prayer? Are you having faith in the fact that I called upon the name of the Lord a hundred times? Or are you putting your faith upon, on the one who saved you? Have you cleaned up your life, but yet not having faith upon the one who will make you a new creature? See, so many people out there can do things that are religious. They can, you could read the scriptures for four hours a day, pray for two hours a day, but yet be lost. Why? Because what are you putting your trust and faith in? It's like the easy believers and heretics, which is exactly what the metaphysical mind science people are. Their faith is in their faith. They have faith in their faith, that their faith saves them. Who saves, who saves you? Our faith is the response unto our Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us. Okay? Our faith is the response for what he has done. Okay? I don't have faith in the fact that I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh, no, my faith is upon, is on Jesus Christ himself. And hence, because the Lord lives within me, you are to work out what he has put in, see? You see? Okay? Because many out there, what does he say here? What does he say here? Thou knowest the commandments. Okay, so, okay, if I pray for two hours a day, then that means I'm saved. If I read the scriptures for two hours a day, that means I say I'm saved, huh? If I give of myself, then I'm saved. Huh? If I pray for others, no, 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 no. No. There are people out there who are as lost as a blind man running a race but can put on the adornments, the accoutrements of religion. But they're not saved. Why? Because they are trusting in those things. Not him. Y'all need Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, let's continue. Because, okay, it says here, Thou knowest the commandments. And he says, whatever they tell you to do, do, but don't do how they do it. Because this is truth, okay? And why did he say that? Okay, thou knowest the commandments. Okay, Romans chapter, Romans chapter three. Okay, let's. We've been through this before. Romans chapter three, Romans chapter three, verses one and two. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Okay, so they had the truth, and our Lord said that. It's like. They're speaking to your truth. The truth that they tell you to do, you do it. But don't do like what they do. Okay? Okay? Why? Because what they did, it was just mechanical. It was to them, line upon line, precept upon precept, not having the author of life within them. Okay? Not having the true love of God in their hearts. But no, going after only for the things of their carnality. That's what it's about with these people, brethren. 
Okay? Okay? And John chapter 7, we have to establish this, brethren. This has to be established again. Okay? This has to be established again. Okay? John chapter 7, verses 45 on verse 53. Okay? They knew the law. They knew the law. They had the commandments. They had the truth. But see, thou knowest the commandments. You know what to do. You know what to do. Right? John chapter 7, verses 45 on to verse 53. This, this, I like this one. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? Hmm. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Oh, a little no pride, no pride there, huh? Yeah. And what would your response be? You obviously don't know. Oh, let me. Sh shut up. Shut up. Just shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, put your head in the toilet, the cold toilet water, you know, maybe, woohoo, play with it a little, and flush it, okay? Cool off, hothead. Okay? Nicodem Nicodemus saith unto them, note what's noted here, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. That's a stigma that when you read about Nicodem Nicodemus, Stuck with him. He that came to Jesus by night. Why? Because he was afraid to go to him openly. Why? Because of fear of the Jews. Even him. And look what he does. Doth our law judge any man before he heareth, hear it, uh, before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? What, are you also with them? Huh? See the accusation there? To one of their own. They're onto their own. Their own. That are within their little <clears throat> unit. Suspicion. Aha. They don't even trust themselves. What we're getting at, brethren. They don't even trust themselves. Well, I pity you people. Wow, who are in that in, in such a <laughs> predicament. Wow. Can't even trust your own people you call brethren. Wow. Afraid to go to someone because God forbid you disagree. Then you get cast out. Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. They were true. That was true. And also true, yeah. Because prophet, priest, and king. Yeah. God, manifest in the flesh, came out of Galilee. Then he wasn't born there, but yes, he came out of that. We, you know. Yeah. And every man went unto his own house. Hmm. And the ultimate thing to this John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. Okay? Thou knowest the commandments. They did. He did. He knew what to do. He knew what? He knew X, Y, Z. He knew. He knew exactly what to be done. He knew it. He knew it all. He did. He was a ruler. Wasn't he? Yeah. Okay? John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. Okay? Remember? What we looked at in Isaiah? Search the scriptures, for in them ye think, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Okay? See, a lost person reading the scriptures who is actually seeking the Lord, you know, who is being broken, being broken, you don't break yourself, by the way. The Lord breaks you through the scripture, okay? Your salvation is totally dependent upon our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He's the one who breaks you through the word. He's the one who convicts you through the word. He's the one who scares the hell out of you. And he's the one, when you go to him in repentance, broken of yourself and contrite, he's the one who saves you. Okay? Not you yourself. You don't boot the door out of the way so you can climb up some other way. Okay? He is the one who saves you. Okay? He is. Okay? He breaks you. He leads you. He guides you. Yes. Come on. Here. You want to the truth? I'll give you a morsel of truth. Sure. Okay? But not everybody's going to do that, see? Okay? And see, there are those out there who can search these scriptures but yet they don't have the author of the scriptures living within them. It is a true saying, worthy of all acceptation. Whenever you read this book, the scriptures, the authorized version, the author is present. He is. There's truth to that. Now let's continue. But I know you. Oh, excuse me, verse 41. How could I forget that? I receive not honor from men. I receive not honor from men. <laughs> Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one. That is God. Yeah. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. The love of God in you. Hmm. You might love what he may be able to give you. Yeah? Not that he, you know what I mean. But do you love him? What if he takes those things away? Will you still love him? Will you still love him? Hmm? I wonder. I truly wonder. Okay? I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. <laughs> if, any, uh, if another shall come in his own name, him shall, him ye will receive. Oh, and there you have the Ite. Campbell Light. Ruckman Ite. Don't even say it. Don't even, don't even bring it upon your lips. You know where we were going. Shh, don't even. Okay? Just leave it alone. But yes, there you bring in the ite. I-T-E. Okay? Yes. Yes. I am coming in my Father's name. And there's only one name given among heaven, uh, given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. That is the name Jesus Christ. So I am coming in my Father's name. What is the name of the Father? Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyway. I am coming in my Father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, Ait, <laughs> him you will receive. How can ye believe again? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? What is man? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, Scripture, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Why? Because it was mechanical. They knew what to do. They knew what to do. They knew exactly what to do. Didn't they? Sure did. Yeah. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not commit. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. Big part. Big part. Verse 21 in Luke chapter 18. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. I've done this. I've done all of it. Now when Jesus heard these things, oh, excuse me, verse 20. Uh, excuse me, verse 22. Okay. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, in Mark chapter uh, 10, Mark chapter 10, hold on, let's, uh, let me get there first really quick. Um, but let's read this verse, verse 22. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. One thing. 
which is the most important ingredient, the most primal, important thing that you are missing, lacking. You're lacking just one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Now, in Mark chapter 10, verse 21, it says this. Mark 9, 9 you twit. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Loved him. Loved him enough to tell him the truth. That is love. How many people try to tell people truth, but in hateful ways? Okay, it might seem hateful, but if it was in true love, mm -hmm. but you want to show love to someone, you tell them the truth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross and follow me. One thing. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. One thing. He knew what to do, the mechanics. He knew how to do this, that, and the other thing. They, he, they had the law. They had the commandments. Okay? He was speaking on to one of his own, the Jews. Okay? They knew all that. And he did it all. But one thing he lacked. What is this one thing that he lacked? Okay. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Okay. Matthew chapter 22. What the one thing that these people lack? Okay. You're going to like this. Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 on to verse 40. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. And one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, Rabbi. Oh, good master. Oh, more flattery. Yeah. Hey, master. <laughs> which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, this, this is what it's all about. This is what it is all about. This is the one thing that so many who are religious are lacking. It's right here. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You see, under the law, you could do what was prescribed to have your sin covered, okay? But were you doing them because of, out of a pure heart? You can read in the uh, book of the, I think it is in either uh, first in the book of the Kings or in Chronicles, uh, you can read about how so several of the kings offered sacrifices, but yet, they're in hell. They're in hell today. Okay? Because it was faith and works. Okay? Under the law, in the dispensation of the law. You could do the works and be wrong with God. Okay? Okay? Works were required because of the blood. Because blood taketh away as the atonement for sin. Okay? Our Lord dis um, prescribed that. And we've talked about that before. Okay? But you could do the works and have no love for God. Okay? If you had the love of God, you would do the works in the Old Testament. See? Okay? And see, this ruler here, he wasn't doing this. He didn't have the love of God in his heart. No. No. Why? Look at verse 23. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Not many mighty, not many noble. Not many wise. One thing you like. And of course, what is he the what is our Lord referring to? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Go there. Come on, you gotta see it. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 6. 
Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 5. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. And what are we reading to here? Verse 5, okay. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord thy God, as the Lord God of thy fathers ha hath promised thee. Pick your pardon. In the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, spirit, soul, and body. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And if you say that doesn't apply for us today, loving the Lord with all our soul, with all with all our heart and soul and might, then you're a heretic and the Lord rebuke you. You think that don't cross dispensational lines, okay? The Lord rebuke you, you're a heretic, okay? If you say that doesn't apply for us today, you're a heretic, okay? Uh, our salvation is dependent on him, okay? Yes, it is, but we love him. Because he first loved us. Okay? But also now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Oh yeah, boy. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. One thing. You've done all this. You've done this. You've done. You read your scriptures all day. You pray all day. You do all this, right? You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, huh? See number one? Or is this religion, this changed life of yours, just like an accoutrement, a, a t-shirt? Huh? Has the only thing that's changed in you is your outer appearance? Huh? You've put on religion like you put on a, a coat or something? Hmm? Huh? Yeah. First Corinthians oh, chapter 13. Oh. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. One thing you lack. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, you sound good, you can speak the right rhetoric, and have not liberty. Oh, excuse me, charity. Well, you might as well, right? Because uh, some people will tell you that liberty doesn't mean liberty. It actually means charity. You lie. You lie. You lie. Come on. Come on, boy. You lie. You're lying. Things that are different are not the same. Oh, oh. Let's, hold up. Hold up. Let's go. Come on. Come on, tough guy. Though I speak with the tongues of men and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Hmm. So you speak the right words. Hmm? Hmm? Sound good. And have not charity. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though all I have all faith, thou believest there is one God, yeah, the devils also believe and tremble. Good for you, okay? So that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. Hmm. Okay, so, okay. Tongues of men sound good. Gift of prophecy, okay? Understand all mysteries, can understand certain things in Scripture, and have all knowledge, you know, quite a bit. And you have faith. Oh, yeah, you have good faith, right? So that you can remove mountains. I have not charity. I am nothing. <laughs> and he said in verse 21, and he said in Luke chapter 18, All these things have I kept from my youth up. I've done all these things. One thing you lack. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, 
giving things away. Here, I'm giving. Here, here, I'm giving. I'm giving you. That's charity, is it? And though I give my body to be burned, though all men depart from you, yet I not I will never do it. Peter, you're gonna deny me three times. No, I'm not. If ever if I'll die with you, I won't deny you. Then in the presence of man, flesh, what happens? You know the story. So you can give all these things, right? And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So, so wait a second, okay? So giving of things is being distinguished from charity. There are those out there, different sub, different train of thought here, that say that charity ought to be love. No. No. It's charity. What is charity? We're going to define that. What is charity? Self-sacrifice. Okay? Now remember, context defines. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But charity, okay, is self-sacrifice. And where does charity begin? Where does charity begin? And what is the byproduct of charity? Okay, see, because look at this. All, you're doing all these things, right? You're giving of yourself. You're giving away your goods. Is that charity? People call that charity. That's not, according to Scripture, what true charity is. And have not charity. It profiteth me nothing. Self-sacrifice. Prove that to you. Okay, I was hoping you would ask me that. Okay? First of all, let's look at the very first variation of where charity appears. Okay? The very first variation of the word charity appears in Romans chapter 14. Okay? Romans chapter 14. Go there. Very first variation of the word charity. Okay? Romans chapter 14, verses 13 on verse 15. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Talking about all kinds of... No, keep reading. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat... Now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, that it's talking about, for whom Christ died. Charitably. Now, self-sacrifice. Is this charitably supposed to be meaning, well, now you're not walking freely or something. What are the first couple of verses in Romans chapter 14? Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. One, for one believeth that he may eateth all things. Another who is weak eateth all herbs. Hmm. So one believeth he may eateth all things, having liberty, knowing that through charity, yes, through charity, through self-sacrifice, he has liberty. Okay? Through charity. Yes. But see, you little heretic, charity is not liberty. They are different things. Our liberty as the Church of the Living God is derived from charity. Yes, it is. But it is not the thing in and of itself, you wicked little heretic. Okay? Okay? Because, okay, for one believeth he may eateth all things. Why? Because he knows the truth. Because he has been set free. He has been given liberty. By what? By the charity of our Lord. Yeah. Charity is self-sacrifice. Grace is undeserving favor. Okay? Okay? So, here when it says, But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest not thou charitably. Charitably. Yeah, okay? If someone who is weak is only like staying kosher, okay? You're not sacrificing for that brother, okay? 
Because you're, you have liberty. You have the freedom to eat whatever you want to eat. Yes, you do. But then you come across someone that's like, well, hey, it's like, okay, man. Hey, I'm not going to rub it in your face. Okay? You're sacrificing yourself for that other brother. Okay? And you right away, it's like, well, what about certain holy days? Holy days. You mean the ones that are talked about in Scripture or the ones that are made up by men? Hmm? Which one? And at least I know when my wife was actually born, by the way. <laughs> okay? So see, because we have liberty from our Lord's charity, we have charity onto those who are weaker because they might not know or are having struggles with things, okay? So charitably is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Okay? Okay, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 8, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, idolatry, oh gee, hmm. we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity, self-sacrifice. Charity is self-sacrifice, dear friends. Let's go a little bit more on this. Now, let's go to Leviticus chapter 25, okay? Let's really, let's really drive this home, okay? Let's drive this home. Leviticus chapter 25. Now, remember, words are defined in context. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But see, things that are different are not the same, okay? Things that are different are not the same thing. Okay? Well, what about wisdom? Uh, our Lord says what wisdom truly is. But in every context of the appearance of the word wisdom, it's defined by the context. Yes, it is. Okay? Yes, it is. But see, liberty is the byproduct of what? Charity. Self-sacrifice. Not the thing in and of itself. You liar. Both of you. You're lying. And for what? Okay, Leviticus chapter 25, verses 8 on to verse 17. Jubilee. Jubilee. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years, okay? And this is, of course, when they are coming to the land, they have been given their possession, they have been given the liberty, they have been set free because they are allowed, they are chosen by God, okay? And they have been given these laws to keep them from sin, okay? That kind of stuff. So they have all this stuff, okay? They have all this stuff. They have been given the blessings of the Lord, Okay? It's important to know. Let's keep reading. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year and proclaim charity throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Wait a minute. It says liberty. Oh, it means... No. No. They are doing what? They are proclaiming liberty. Why? Because they have abundance. You read from verse 1 and the context of the entire chapter here, if you have the time to. I know you're so busy. But if you read the context of it, because they have been blessed, they are giving of themselves. They are sacrificing. So because they are sacrificing of themselves, in that sacrifice, they are proclaiming liberty. Okay? Something other. It's derived from being charitable. Yes, it is. Self-sacrifice. But it is not the thing in and of itself. Okay? Liberty is a result of someone being charitable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
But to say that it is actually a thing in and of itself, no, it is not. No, it is not. You do greatly err. <laughs> and I wonder why. Hmm. So they are proclaiming liberty because of their charity. Okay? And it's something that they, who has the charity, are proclaiming unto some. I'll give you an example. Prisoners. They're not free. They're in prison, but they can have liberty in prison. Hmm? Okay? You can have liberty and no freedom. You can have freedom and no liberty. Okay? You see? You can have charity and have no liberty. You can have liberty and have no charity. They are two different things. Not one and the same. Okay? And ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And see, their charity is resulting in liberty. Okay? Liberty is not charity. Okay? Charity results in liberty, but liberty is not charity. Okay? And ye shall return every man unto his possessions out of their charity. They proclaim liberty. And ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall the fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap. That which groweth of itself, that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. What are we reading to here, by the way? Beg your pardon. Uh, to verse 17. For it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you, set apart. Okay? Ye shall eat of the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee ye shall return every man unto his possession. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruits he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits, doth he sell unto thee. Ye shall not therefore press one another, but thou shalt fear thy God. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. So liberty is the result of them being charitable, of having charity, self-sacrifice. But see, liberty of itself is not charity, okay? Because, let's have a look at Bill Gates, okay? They have liberty, and they are liberal, aren't they not? But you might even say, well, they have charity. Uh, no, they're writing it off on their taxes. They're giving to get back. Our Lord says in the, on the, in the Sermon on the Mount, which is for the kingdom of heaven, yes, instruction and righteousness, you give to others just to give back. Is that being charitable? No. No. Hence, without true charity, okay, you can have liberty. Yes. True charity, which is self-sacrifice, will result in liberty. But it is not liberty in itself, nor is liberty in itself charity. Okay? You gotta watch it for these people, brethren. You gotta watch out for this. Okay? You gotta watch out for this. Things that are different are not the same. Okay? Words are important. Okay? You're striving about words. Okay, then God is spirit, right? Yeah, give me a break. Give me a break, okay? And Genesis chapter 22. What is charity? You want a really good example of what charity is? Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself don't look at me god will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together god will provide himself a lamb charity through god's charity self sacrifice gave himself we as the church of the living god who came to him on his terms have liberty Okay, that's how it works. Okay, 
That's how it works. We who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God through God's charity. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb, self-sacrifice. Okay? Okay. For a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. See, through the Lord's charity, self-sacrifice, he has proclaimed to us liberty. We have liberty. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, and the Lord is that Spirit, there is liberty. Okay? And that liberty, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Alleluia. That liberty that we have as the church of the living God, amen, no dispute, none whatsoever, comes from our Lord's charity. Okay? And we, as the church of the living God, we are to have charity for others. Yes, we are. And in our charity, self-sacrificing, okay, that is a result unto liberty but not liberty itself. Because like I said, there are many out there who have all kinds of liberty, but they have not true charity. Why? Because they're doing it just to get uh, things back in return or to get the applauses of men, to get a little pat on your head or to pat yourself on the back. It's not true charity. True charity is self-sacrifice. And liberty, amen, comes from self-sacrifice. But how many out there have this liberty but have not true charity? Because they have that liberty but only to have liberty just so they get back. Just so they get back. Okay? Danger, Will Robinson. And of course, here, here, here's another good example. Some of you are going to love this. John 3.16. Okay? There's a place for John 3.16. Uh, okay? There is a place. You know, you shouldn't be afraid to use it because of these Christians, okay? Nor should you be afraid to um, use or speak anything of uh, Romans chapter 3 because of the people who have faith in their faith, okay? Uh, uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. Come on, y'all know it. For God so loved, past tense, the world that he gave. Past tense, his only begotten Son, that whomsoever, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <laughs> Verse 21 in uh, Luke chapter 18. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Verse 22. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Something got in the way. Something got in the way. He didn't have true charity. Sacrifice. Yes. Yes. Your life is not your own. You are bought with a price. That one thing that you lack is charity. Putting the Lord first. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Yeah, that's a sacrifice. Especially when you got devils bearing down on you. When you have turmoil in your own house. You... you Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Okay, self-sacrifice. Okay, that's charity. That is charity. Okay, and now Proverbs chapter eleven. Here's a very interesting one. See, charity, true charity, is of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our liberty, which is derived from his charity, is what? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Get this through your head. Jesus Christ, God our Father, he is our charity. He is our liberty. He is our everything. Okay? Okay? These are different things. Deriving from charity, yes. Liberty derives from charity. But liberty is not the thing in and of itself. Okay? It's something that he gives us through his charity. Okay. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Verses 23 on to verse 28. Ah, ah. Now this one is, single, is singular reference. 
The desire of the righteous is only good. Oh, oh, oh. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one. That is God. So, the desire of the righteous is only good. The desire of the righteous is only God. Not idolatry or paganism. Oh. But the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but tendeth to poverty. You know, these stingy people. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Well, see, that's giving. Yes, but why? Why is the liberal soul made fat? Because the desire of the righteous is only good, and there is only one good. That is God. And we looked at uh, liberty already in Leviticus, being liberal, okay? Giving, yes! Yes, but why are you giving? Why are you giving? Because you have been made free from what? From what? The world. From sin, okay? Doesn't mean you're not going to sin, but yes, see, being liberal, having liberty, derives from charity. It's not the thing in and of itself. Why? Prove it, okay? The desire of the righteous is only good. And what is good? God, okay? So God, who is our charity, he gives us liberty, Okay? And because the righteous the desire of the righteous is only good, that makes us liberal. We give away, not expecting to get back. Okay? Having true charity will make one liberal and will produce in others and give to others liberty. Yes. But liberty is not the thing in and of itself. It's different things. It's two different things. And trying to make them into one thing, that's heresy. That's yea hath God said. Things that are different are not the same, okay? He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Selleth it. Okay? He that diligently seeketh good procureth Favor, grace. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. And right here. He that trust he that trusteth in his riches shall fall. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Right. Amen. See, liberty, being liberal, is the result of charity. Okay? Bill Gates, Tony Robbins, Elon Musk, uh, many philanthropists, this disgusting Mr. Beast guy. Very liberal, isn't he? He has liberty, doesn't he? But he has no charity. He has no charity. Charity is what? Jesus Christ. God shall provide himself a lamb. He has no self-sacrifice. Uh, about that Mr. Beast guy, I bet you that guy, uh, I mean, apparently he's got billions, okay? All the taxes that he's being able to write off. Yeah. Yeah. See, charity is self-sacrifice. Liberty, being liberal, results from charity. Yes, it does. But it is not the thing in and of itself. No, it is not. Not at all. And of course, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 on to verse 8. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 on to verse 8. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You looking at that? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Okay? You have received liberty from God's charity. Okay? They're not one and the same. Okay? 
You can have God's charity, but have no liberty. Hmm? You can have liberty and have no charity. They're two different things. But see, having true charity, which is derived from God, who gave himself a lamb, okay? Who gave himself. That produces our liberty as the church of the living God. Things that are different are not the same. Okay? Context, yes, defines. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And yes, our liberty is the result of his charity. Amen. No dispute there. But they're two different things, boy. They're two different things. And trying to say they're the same thing. Yea, hath God said. Yeah, and John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. One thing you lack. John chapter 8. And, and by the way, wasn't this rich ruler here? Didn't he have liberty? Sure did. But the one thing he lacked was what? God. Who saves you. By grace. Merited favor bestowed upon those. I will be gracious unto whom I will be gracious. Okay? Bestowed unto you by what? By his charity. You don't understand what true charity is. You don't. You really don't. Okay? John chapter 8, verses 31 on to verse 36. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin in you. Read this in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 13, I believe it is. Okay? And the servant abideth not forever in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Okay? Making reference onto this coming dispensation, I believe, with this verse, about how he will indwell with those whom are saved. Okay? If the son, therefore, shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. Well, why didn't he use the word li I don't know. I didn't write the book. But I do know that words are important. Oh, I sure do. Sure do. Okay? And of course, Psalm 119. Again, our liberty is the result of God's charity. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. But liberty is not charity. It is not. It is not. It is not. It is not. Psalm 119. Hold on, I'm getting there. Psalm 119. Veyu. Psalm 119. Veyu. Or excuse me. Uh, verses 41 on to verse 48. Let thy... Look at how this begins. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. Notice how this begins. Let thy mercies also come also unto me, O Lord. It begins with God, okay? And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually, forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty. Why? For I seek thy precepts. Now remember, Paul talked about this in the book of Romans chapter 7, okay? The law is good. The commandment is good to make you aware of sin. And if you walked in that to keep you from sin, that was a good thing. But it also killed you because you realized that as a sinner, you can't keep the law perfectly, Okay? There was not a law that could give life, okay? It was meant to give you life, keeping you away from those evil things of the world. So, in doing what God says, 
Liberty. Why is this liberty here? For I will seek thy precepts. Okay? And today, like it says in Romans chapter 6, we have liberty because he has set us free from sin. We're going to sin because our spirit and soul are housed within the skin suit, yes. But we are not in bondage. Okay? And because we are not in bondage, we have his charity, which has produced liberty in us. We walk according to his precepts. And these things are the things of this world. Don't cleave unto us, see? Okay? I will, speak also, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Okay? Okay? And uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I, I do not dispute the fact that you are to sacrifice for weaker brethren. Okay? Absolutely. I, I do not... We, I do not dispute that at all. Absolutely not. But to go ahead and boldly and ignorantly say that liberty actually means charity, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's, yea, hath God said, that's heresy. That's error. You're lying. Okay? Whether it's ignorance or willful ignorance, I don't know. I think it's more willful. But to say that liberty is actually charity... No, it's not. No, it's not. They're different. Okay? Romans chapter 8, verses 18 on to verse 22. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage, from the bondage of corruption, okay, check this out, into the glorious charity of the children of God? Into the glorious liberty of the children of God being set free from this world. Oh boy. Oh, boy. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. You see, brethren, people, there are a lot of people out there who, like I said, will put on religious adornments. They, you know, they, they read the scriptures, they do this, that, and the other thing. But where's your, what are you trusting? Who are you trusting on? Who, upon whom is your faith? Okay? Upon what? I, I have faith in my prayers. That means I'm saved. Okay? I have faith in the fact that I call upon the name of the Lord. Okay? I have faith in my faith. Okay? What are those? All, okay? But besides that, what is your faith supposed to hinge upon? Upon whom? See, easy believism tells you that just believe. No, you have to be broken. Okay? Repentance. Broken of your self-righteousness. Who breaks you? You? No. The Lord does. Through the scriptures. Okay? Okay? But to say just believe, you're having faith in your faith. There are those out there who say, I called upon the name of the Lord, but they ain't broken. So they're having faith in the fact that they call. I know a couple of these, okay? I know a couple of these devils who say, well, I've called on the name of the Lord, and I'm saying, but you're not a new creature. You're still lost. You, there's no fruit. There's no chastisement. There's, no, there's nothing. There's nothing. All you do is attack people, okay? No. Nah. They, see, they're having faith in the fact that they called. That's not it. Or I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm saved because I'm... Oh, who are you praying to? I'm praying to the Lord Jesus. Okay. Are you trusting on him alone? 
that he is your salvation. God is our salvation, brethren. He is our charity. He is our liberty. He is our salvation. See, we have the church of the living God. Okay? Amen. Pray. Read the scripture. <laughs> of course. But why are we doing that? Because of his charity, we have liberty. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verses 15 on verse 17. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. For, there, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. From faith, faith in what God will do in the Old Testament as pertaining to salvation, you know, covering of sins with the blood, unto today, faith in what has been done. It is finished. Okay? From faith to faith. Faith in what you do and faith in what he has done for us. Okay? Him. You have faith on him. These easy believism devils, they have faith in their faith. Well, I just believe they're they're believing in their belief that their belief is no that that's that's metaphysical mind science. Excuse me, that's meta, metaphysical mind science. Okay, you save yourself by your own belief. You know, you boot the door out the way and then you climb up some other way. Okay, same principle. I call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might have even been crying too. Okay, good for you, but are you trusting on Him alone? Are you trusting on the Lord Jesus Christ? Him! Okay? These, you know, brokenness, contrition, and calling upon the name of the Lord, it's one event. It's It happens. It's a fluid motion. Okay? Okay? Yes. But see, our trust, our faith, lies upon Jesus Christ. That he is who he said he is. And he has done what he has said he has done. Okay? Many people are putting their faith on the adornments that accompany what ought to be true faith. Aha! Okay? Like it is written, like it says right here. Okay? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In the Old Testament, and what he will do. Today, it's finished! Okay? And, and also now see, to these he these easy believers and heretics will go to Romans chapter 3, verse 26. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that, the, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And they say, that's the gospel. No. No, that is not the gospel. This is the description of what is coming, okay? Because Romans chapter 3, you read verses 10 on verse 18, it's there to break you. Okay, and here is your solution. It's like, hey, here's the solution to your problem. Okay, like I said, just because the easy believism devils harp on here in Romans chapter three from uh, from what is it um, from verses twenty two on to verse twenty six, they stop at verse twenty six. That's where they stop and they say it's just believe. It's just belief. The devils also, you thou believest there is one God, the devils also believe and tremble. Okay? No, 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 no. No. Okay? See, this is giving you the answer to the problem that is being pointed out to you in Romans 1, 2, and for a majority for the first parts of Romans chapter 3. This is the solution. Okay? You go to Romans chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 7. Okay? What shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. <laughs> Verse 21 in Luke chapter 18. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. But one thing he lacked. He lacked God. He lacked the love of God in his heart. He lacked the charity of God. which 
true charity results in true liberty. They're different things. Okay, but let's continue here. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. The rich ruler, he knew what to do. He knew what to do. Okay? But see, it is an issue of the heart, after all. It really is. Let's continue. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, unmerited favor, but of debt. I do this, this, and this. And how many people out there, I pray for two hours a day. I read my scriptures for four hours a day. I help people, but yet they're lost. Why? Because they think that they go and do this, that by debt they are going to inherit God. No. 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 You have not received the charity, the grace of God. Grace and charity are different things, okay? Grace is uh, grace is unmerited favor. I will be gracious unto whom I will be gracious, okay? Whoever I want to, I'm going to give it. Charity, God shall provide himself a lamb. Self-sacrifice. Liberty, being made free. At, set at liberty, proclaimed to us by God's charity through his grace, okay? Okay? Right? You, you, you with me so far? This ain't that difficult. Okay? Many people out there. I, okay, I'll change this. I'll do this and do this by debt. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't know God, dear friend. You don't know who God is. You don't. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even David, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Let's look at that. That is Psalm, what is that? Uh, I lost my place in my notes. Uh, that is Psalm 32. Psalm 32. One thing you lack. What is that one thing you lack? God. God, that is the one thing you lack. Because there are other things in your heart more important to you than what God has said and then God himself. Okay? Something. The idols have been set up in the heart. The stumbling blocks. Okay? Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Verses 1 under verse 7. Let's read it. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Floods of great waters. And remember, often uh, waters are likened unto people. Okay? Remember, then again, it's context, 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 context. Okay? Thou, right there, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Shalah. Thou, God, God, the one thing you lack. You do all this, this, and this. No peace, no joy, no happiness, no liberty. But yet, you think you got liberty. One thing you lack. And our Lord puts his finger on that one thing you, you lack. He points it out to you. That thing that has taken place in your heart above God. And what is it? What is it? Idolatry. 
paganism? Hmm? Hmm? Social status? A relationship? A person? Which is a spirit soul body? What is it? Hmm? What is it? Let's keep let's keep reading, okay? Okay? Let's continue this. Now go to Romans chapter nine. Romans chapter nine. Romans chapter 9, verses 30, under verse 33. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone rich ruler. See, oh, let's, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. See, easy believism people like to say, well, you discount faith. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Faith is our response to God's grace. His grace given to us by His charity, okay? And in by His charity, through His grace, we have liberty, okay? Three different things. Stemming from the same source, now who is that? God! But three different things, okay? Romans chapter 10, have to. And remember, verse 14 is about those who are called and sent out to speak on these things, okay? Romans chapter 10, verses 4 on to verse 13. For Christ is the end of the law for a righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Yeah, what good thing? Okay, what is that? <laughs> what shall I do to inherit internal life? Hmm. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Wait, you're going to do that because you just believe? You say, I okay, la, 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 la. oh, boot the door out of the way. Okay, I believe I'm safe. Or, boot the door out of the way. Jesus Christ, please save me. Okay, I'm saved. I trust that I called on your name. There we go. I'm saved. And live like the devil. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Or, who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Believe everything to receive it. Oh, shut up. <laughs> that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. At the end of the day, it is an issue of the heart. See, God breaks you of your self-righteousness through the scripture, okay? And in that breaking, you are made aware that it is your fault and he is just to do unto you as he sees fit. He is just to send you to hell. And you deserve it. And it's your fault that he went to the cross. Your hand held the hammer that put the nail into his hand. Your hands were the ones that put the crown of thorns on him. Your hands nailed his feet together. It's you your fault and in that your heart is broken and it ought to scare the hell out of you and then your only option where else are you going to go your only option y'all need jesus lord jesus christ save me i can't say help me save me forgive me i repent okay you sidestep that and go right to belief or to these guys who are saying i've called on the name of the lord were you broken? Did the Lord break you? See, 
what they are doing, the one thing they lack is the Lord. And they're putting faith in the things that they have done. And when you come to the Lord appropriately, which, you know, if you've ever led anyone, if, excuse me, if the Lord has used you to lead someone onto himself through the book of Romans and you see before your eyes, you see it, okay? Someone broken, contrite, and in fear calling upon the name of the Lord, okay? You see it, okay? Verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. But are you calling him on him out of a broken and contrite heart? Or just something mechanical because someone said do this. And then you have faith in that the fact that you believe or in the fact that you have called. And your faith is in those things themselves, not upon our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many people who have faith in what they have done, not faith on him. Which one are you? Which one are you? Okay. Which one? Which one? Now let's look at verse 23, okay? Again. In Matthew chapter of Matthew, Luke chapter 18. And when he heard this, the rich man, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. What was the one thing he lacked? God. Love of love for God. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And remember, this was before the death, burial, and resurrection, too. A couple of one verse references here. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, just a couple of one-verse references. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters. You can't sit at the Lord's table and the table of devils. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. There's one thing you lack. And also, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Not 11, Brad. Sorry. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Hmm. And he said unto them, this is our Lord Jesus Christ talking, take heed and beware of covetousness. For man's life consisteth not in the abundance of these things which he possesseth. possesseth. And of course, Paul admonishes us, you know, having food and raiment, let us, there be, let us be there with content. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay? And covetousness. Beware of covetousness. What about covetousness? Oh, what does our Lord think of covetousness? Okay, covetousness as meaning things of the world. Oh, Psalm, Psalm 10, Psalm 10, Psalm 10, verses 1, on to verse 3. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou, thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices which they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. Shh, shush, shush. Leave that alone. The wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. What is the desire of your heart? Hmm. 
What is the desire of your heart? That's my question to you. That is my question to you. Now, verses 24 and 25 in, Matthew, in Luke chapter 18. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for, the, for a camel to go through a needle's eye. And he was, you know, yeah, that can't happen. That can't happen. Okay? It's easier for a big camel to go through a little needle's eye. Okay? That's impossible. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of God, it says there, which is spiritual. Hmm. So if you're a Christian and you got to feel the need to rub into people's faces how you've been blessed and all that, these I I can't stand people like this. I really can't. I really can't. Okay? Keep your blessings. You've been blessed. Praise the Lord. Shut up. Sing a song. Praise the Lord, yes. But don't rub it in my face. Please. What about those who are less than, have less than anyone else? Yes, we as the church of the living God, yes, be grateful for the blessings upon our brethren. Absolutely, absolutely. And we do. We do. I do. I, I praise the Lord. I, I know a brother of mine from North Dakota, God, you know, uh, my brother from uh, uh, New Jersey. Amen. My brother, <laughs> my best friend, my brother uh, in uh, Australia, um, my brother in Croatia, my sister in Florida, my sister in England, okay? <laughs> my, my brother in Ohio. These are people. Oh, praise the Lord for these blessings. Okay? When you start to boast them, that is the danger. And that, what, and that, dear friend, that is what is abhorrent. Because, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again. Verses 4 on to verse 7. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Yes, it is. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. And how many times do you see people who have liberty, but not true charity, and they're puffed up? Doth not behave itself unseemly, speaketh, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, seeketh not her own. Some of these people, they're seeking their own end. They're doing things, twisting scripture to suit their own end. And true charity, self-sacrifice, does not seek her own. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, in the truth, excuse me. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Yes. We are to have charity for uh, weaker brothers. Yes, we are. To be charitable unto them. Yes. 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 Okay. But see, that charity is not liberty. Okay. Liberty is a product, if you will, of charity, but it is not liberty. Liberty and charity are two different things, okay? And to say that the one is the other is, uh-uh, heresy. Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. That's what that is. Verses 26 and 27 in Luke chapter 18. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with God. Oh, excuse me. The things which are impossible with men 
are possible with God. And there it is again, God. He is our charity. He is our liberty. He is our salvation. He is what you lack. That one thing. That one thing that you lack. That one thing that you lack. It's God. It's God. Because how many people have replaced God with religious activities? Religious adornments? Abstaining from things, yes. Having a changed life, but not being a new creature. Alcoholics can have a changed life, but not be new creatures. The one thing you lack is God. Sacrifice of yourself, because you do not belong to yourself anymore if you are truly saved, born again, converted. The one thing that you lack is charity. Yes, charity. And charity is what? Self-sacrifice. And yes, you are to have charity for brethren. Yes, who want to. It's like, okay, I'll eat anything. Okay, I will. Uh, if someone who is of the church of the living want, God wants to be stay kosher, it's like, okay, I'll have charity. I'll sacrifice that. It's like, okay, fine. Okay, it's not liberty. Okay, that's charity. Someone wants to worship the Lord on Monday and you want to do it Tuesday, fine. That's fine, okay? Because we are to set a day aside for the Lord specifically. You have 365 days. Why make a big stink out of just one? The truth is, the truth is, dear friend, you guys have made it an idol. P prove me wrong. You have made it into an idol. You are idolaters. You have turned this thing into a thing of idolatry amongst yourselves. And you wonder why. And you wonder why. Personally, I believe it is wicked. It's of Satan and evil. Look at him. Look at him. Look at them. You know, they accuse uh, people of being, getting emotional when they themselves are the ones who have gotten emotional too. Hmm. Hmm. You've made it into an idol. And you're, well, an idol is a step. No, an idol is anything that you set before God. You've made it an idol. And you're twisting scripture to justify it. Yea, hath God said? Full pride. Full pride. Oh, and let me hear your defenses about what you've done, right? Full of pride. I'd like to hear some of these people actually, it's like, yeah, I have a pride problem. Sam Gipp, okay, you, you know Sam Gipp, okay? He actually said, I don't have a pride problem. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Or, I'm a very humble person. I snuff my pride. Oh, 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 I struggle with pride. Do you? Do you? Is it until you're backed into a corner that you come out and admit it, or what? I know a lot of you are bothered. I know, I know. I know. Let them alone. They're the blind leaders of the blind. 
who seek men's persons, who have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Let them alone. Let them alone. Okay? Like our Lord says uh, to Peter, when Peter's like, uh, Lord, what about this guy? And the Lord's like, what is it to thee? You follow me. Never mind what he's doing. They, they, they want to do that. To let them go. Let them go. Until, at a certain season, they're going to come out with guns a blazing. You watch. Oh, yeah. They're going to come out with guns a blazing. Yeah, they are. Don't hurt yourself. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 4 and verse 5. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus. That they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Second Peter chapter one, uh, second Peter chapter two, second Peter chapter two, verses one on to verse three. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Make merchandise of you. You're not a person to these people. Just a means. And verses 18 on to verse 19 in 2 Peter chapter 2. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. In Matthew chapter twenty, uh, Matthew chapter seven, again verses twenty-one on to verse twenty-three. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Different, different dispensation. Absolutely, this is talking about the literal kingdom of heaven and his second coming. We, we know this. Okay, let's continue. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Where there are prophecies, they shall cease. That's in the rest of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, by the way. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. One thing you lack. Lack. 
Now, when Jesus in uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 22, now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Verse 23 in Matthew chapter 7. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. One thing you lack. Charity is self-sacrifice. And the ultimate act of charity that you and I as the Church of the Living God have received is God himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And through his charity, okay, because of God's charity, his self-sacrifice, God shall provide himself a lamb, okay? And through his grace, I will be merciful unto whom I will be merciful, okay? By grace, through our faith on him, we have liberty. Charity is what you are lacking. What charity? That charity that is God. That is what you are lacking. That's going to be it for this video. I will not be speaking about this again. There are other things, other issues. Lots of distractions going on, aren't there? I've done, uh, excuse me. The Lord had me to, ow. <laughs> Amen. The Lord had me to do a video uh, about distractions before. But, um, you know, when you got things going on where man makes a big stink about things, I instinctively like to look, okay, you got, the Jesuits want you to look uh, at what's going on here, okay? Distraction. Like, underlings of certain people will make a big noise to draw your attention away from their one that they're trying to defend. It's like, hey, look at me. Don't look at him. Don't look at what he's doing. Look at me instead, okay? That's Jesuit. So, have you looking here, that's when you pay real close attention to what this is going on, what's going on right here. When they want you to look at this, you look at that. Hmm. Interesting. Yes? So. D don't, be, don't be disheartened. We knew things like this was, were going to happen. We knew that, I mean, you, 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 you got it written down for you, brethren. Men will be lovers of them, their own selves. Okay? Lovers of their own selves. Okay? We knew it was going to happen. Doesn't make it easier, no, but we knew it was going to happen. Have faith in God. In our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And trust on Him alone. He is your charity. He is your liberty. He is your salvation. Three different things. All having one thing in common. What's that? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And who is God? Thank you, brethren. We love you. We pray for so many of you. Keep an eye out. Um, especially, um, you know, the clocks go ahead here, here in our nation in America. Not in every state in the Union, but here in, like, Illinois, spring ahead, fall behind. The clocks are going ahead uh, this Sunday. So right now it's 1144. It would be 1244. Okay, so I'm going to be coming out with a bunch of videos here, Lord willing. I've got several things to address. 
um, things that are pertinent that's going on right now that many people are wondering about. And um, so please keep us in your prayers. We pray for so many of you. Thank you for those of, uh, uh, those of you who pray for us, those of you who help us. Dearly, dearly beloved, thank you for the thumbnail, by the way. And thank you for all that you do. Um, thank you to all of you. Thank you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.